Good morning, church. It's good to be here. And also, it's good to be with each other, to be in each other's company. I also greet those that are on Zoom, currently streaming on Zoom or those that are on YouTube at the moment. <clears throat> As we know, uh, all of us, uh, this week we are celebrating Easter, which perhaps on, a, on our Christian calendar is a very important time in our, on our Christian walk. And as we reflect, we know that Christ was crucified and that he died and that he was buried. And on the third day, he resurrected. So today, my lesson is going to focus more importantly on the resurrection. As we all know, during the ministry of Jesus, there were a number of important things that he did. Amongst them is that he healed those who were sick. He fed some of them. He fed the 5,000, if you remember. He did some amazing things. He walked on water. He raised people from the dead. Lazarus, to be particular. But I think one of the defining moments of his ministry was his cru crucifixion, his death on the cross, his burial, and indeed his resurrection. And these three actually define who we are today. We know that Christ, before he, he died, he actually um, foretold of his death. So if we open on uh, oh, uh, a verse in Mark chapter 9, verse 32 to, 30, uh, 30 to 32, it says, Mark 9, 30 to 32, it says, they went on from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days, he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to ask. I, I can imagine, if it was myself, knowing that yet yeah, this is going to happen to me. I'm not too sure how I was going to behave. But he was aware, he knew that was, that was part of God's plan. But, and even if he told his disciples, they didn't understand. And like I said, the reason we are today, we are here today as brothers and sisters in Christ is because of what he did on the cross. It is so important that it does form the foundation of our Christian faith. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Christ. We wouldn't be here today if Christ had not died. And more importantly, we wouldn't be here today if he had risen. If you read uh, uh, the, the, the verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 to 4, which Dennis did uh, read part of it, it's, uh, Paul says, I delivered to you as of the first importance what I also received from Christ, uh, what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance of the scriptures. Of the first, first importance, I've underlined that word. That was so important that he had to do that. But why is uh, resurrection so important, one might ask. Why was it so important? We know that 
when they killed him and they put him in the tomb, fine. Perhaps people die and they are buried. But more impo importantly is that he resurrected. So what is the importance of that? We know that with, without resurrection, Jesus' ministry would have ended up in defeat and in disillusionment. He had done a great job. But if he had died and died a natural death and that thing, the end of him, it would not have made any difference to what he had come to do on earth. So we see the disillusionment um, from a passage that we read in Luke 24, verse 19 to 21. And here we see two men, among them was Cephas, who were on their way to, um, to Emmaus. And in verse 19 reads, and he said to them, what things? This is Jesus. And they say to him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty indeed and word before God, and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to, the, uh, to be condemned to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes. And besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Here are men who were looking for, forward to Jesus. They can acknowledge how great Jesus was. They can acknowledge the good things that he had done. They can acknowledge the greatness. They can acknowledge that he, indeed he was going to be the savior. He was going to redeem Israel. But here we are, he, he was crucified. They said to, 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 to him without knowing, Three days ago, it's now three days since he died. I can imagine how disappointed they were. Surely they were looking up at him and saying, look, here is our savior, but he's dead. So resurrection was important because it had to actually prove one thing, that Jesus was above what not a normal person would have been. Because a normal person, when he dies, he would be buried, and that's generally what is the, the, the story. And therefore, when he resurrected, that was a clear testimony that he was indeed the Son of God. It also proved another thing that the faith that we have in Christ is anchored on the fact that Jesus is a living savior. We serve a living savior. He is alive. He's not a martyr. A martyr could have died for his beliefs, and that was the end of it. But Jesus, through resurrection, we know that he's alive and is reigning. And that does strengthen our faith. It does build our resolve to continue to serve God through him. And just to sort of uh, add to that, in First Corinthians 15, again, the passage which Dennis read to us, 15, uh, uh, chapter 15, verses 17 to 19. Sorry, I didn't, I, I didn't bring that one up. But it says, and, I, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for the, this life we have hope in Christ, we are, all, we are of all people most to be pitied. That is, if he had died and hadn't resurrected. The other important thing, too, 
But we can also see from the resurrection of Christ is that resurrection signified victory over sin. Through resurrection, Jesus overcame, uh, conquered death and overcame sin. And those who are baptized through him are forgiven of their sins. This is again alluded in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, uh, 56 to 57, where Paul says, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus uh, overcame death, uh, over, uh, sorry, overcame death, victory over sin was achieved. We are thankful today because we know that we have a Savior who saved us, who made our relationship with our Father possible because of resurrection. The other thing, again, why resurrection was important is the fact that uh, Jesus forever lives and uh, intercedes for us. There is no doubt in the Old Testament that people had to go and uh, time and again with bulls and cows to do sacrifices. But Jesus is, was the ultimate sacrifice. In Hebrews 7, verses uh, 22 to 25, he says, This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to serve uh, to serve to the, to the outermost those who draw uh, near to God through him since he is always uh, he, he always li uh, lives to make intersections for them. What a pleasure to know that. That indeed Christ is there and he intercedes on our behalf all the time. We don't have to worry about having to sacrifice, to carry out this sacrifice like what the people in the Old Testament would do. We know that his blood, which was shed on the cross, did all that. And that he lives today because he resurrected. <clears throat> now, at this juncture, one might ask, was resurrection indeed real? Because we could perhaps be still be doubting. Because we know that Thomas, one of the disciples who was close to him, also doubted that. In John 20, 24 to 25, he says, Unless I see the marks in his hands and put my fingers where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. I will not believe. What more us who live today here was a man who was with him time and again. But he says, I, wanted to, I want to see the, uh, the holes where the nails went through. I need to see the sides where the spear went through so that I can believe. Already in the passage read to us this morning, we read about a number of witnesses that actually saw Jesus being alive after he had resurrected. We heard about Cephas. He also appeared uh, um, before the 12 disciples and more than 5,000 other people. We heard about the two men going to Emmaus. 
He also appeared before James and then to Paul as well, like from what we heard from the passage read to us. And if we look at uh, Luke 24, 36 to 39, he actually appeared to the disciples and invited them to look at his hands and the feet as well as touching and feel his, his body. In Luke 24, verses 41 to 43, he even was given a piece of fish which he ate. And eight days later, we read, in, uh, we read that he actually entered a room where his disciples were and where Thomas was, and they said, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put in, uh, it into my side. And he says, stop doubting and believe. This he was, take, uh, he was uh, uh, telling Thomas. So indeed, Jesus resurrected. There's no doubt with that. From the testimonies this, that we read, and in fact, in John 20, verse 29, he actually, Jesus goes uh, a step further and, uh, and says to Thomas, because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Who are us? We never saw his hands. We never saw the uh, hole on his hands. We never saw his, his side where the spear went through but we believed. And Jesus said, blessed are those that believe. The next question that I might bring to us who are seated here today is, but what does the resurrection of Christ mean to me as an individual? I think that's a a very important question that we use this time that we have today as we commemorate Easter Sunday. What does it mean to me? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to us as a congregation? I think to help us uh, to interrogate or to actually reflect on this, we're going to look at a passage in Romans 6, verses 1 to 8. And this is Paul writing. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in our in sin that grace may abound? Should we continue sinning? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. What a profound passage it is. I think all of us will agree that as I said, resurrection, his death, his um, burial and resurrection form the basis of our faith. Paul does ask an important, uh, uh, an important um, question here. Shall we continue to sin therefore? And the answer is definitely no. And if you check on that passage, it talks of having been baptized into Christ's death. We were baptized into Christ's death. How did this happen? We know that um, through 
baptism, we express our faith in God and our desire to have a relationship with our Father through him. So, when we were baptized in water during uh, baptism, that symbolized uh, from the passage how we get uh, baptized into his death. That symbolized our spiritual union that was made between us and Christ. Therefore, just as Jesus died on the cross and was buried and then raised on the third day, we have this mirror of us being submerged into the waters of baptism. And as we do that, we die to our sinful nature. And with that death, the old person in us dies as well. And just as Jesus was raised on the third day, and as we rise from the waters of baptism, we are raised as a new people, as a new person, as a person free from sin. Our sins are forgiven, and we are added to his church. That is so consoling. I know it might be a, been a long time. I was actually, as I was writing this, I was actually thinking, picturing myself when I got baptized. That's a long time ago. Then perhaps still a teenager, 14 year old. What was in my mind at that time, to be honest, I was actually reflecting at that time, was because it was uh, just getting to, uh, into winter. I was more worried about how cold that water is going to be. How cold is it going to be? But when we reflect today, as we reflect the resurrection of Christ, what it means to us, it surpasses that coldness. In fact, when I was being baptized, because remember, baptism is a matter of seconds. You are immersed, and then you are risen within seconds. A simple ex exercise, very simple. But the significance that lies behind that is so huge. As we reflect today and think about Christ uh, uh, rising from the waters, I mean, rising from the dead, as we got ourselves raised from those waters of that baptism, I would like for each, each one of us to just take a moment and think how that is, is meant to have changed our life. There are times we get uh, sidetracked with a lot of things, as you would perhaps know in the lives that we live today. But just think about that moment when we had this spiritual union, as we got as we had that union in uh, in the in our baptism, um, as we got united with Christ in His death. I think what is also um, one of the things that I considered as well as important is to actually rejuvenate myself, which I hope you will, you will as well as a Christian, just to say this journey is not just a journey which is like any journey that we have traveled, but it's an important journey as it leads us to eternal life. The hope that we get through having Christ in our life is so immense. And it re-energizes us. So as we live today, perhaps the most important thing that I would like for us to take as we go home or as we do our things in the coming days is to remember how we should be rejuvenated as we think of Christ being raised from the dead. Let us set our minds on the things that are above, as the writer in, uh, Paul says, um, uh, in Colossians 3, verse 1 to 4. Let's not be sidetracked of the things we know we have gone through numerous challenges. Perhaps the most important, the most distant one is the, this pandemic. It can drag us 
and put us away and drag our efforts. But above all, I implore you to remember what is important. Like what Paul said, what is of first importance? It is that life eternal. Other thing that I also thought maybe the resurrection of Christ brings to our attention is that we have a duty. We have a duty to spread the good news. It's not for me only to say, oh, okay, I got baptized. Yes, I've got uh, hope. But we need everyone. We were given a duty to reach out to God. Therefore, remember in Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20, uh, to 20, where he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of time. That's an important task that we need to take along. And above all, let us remain faithful doing his job, being an example to the world to say someone who has been uh, someone who has been added to say, how do we live? How do we behave? How do we talk to each other? Showing that love. As I conclude, I'm really hopeful that the message that we heard today about Jesus re resurrecting is something that we are going to carry every day of our life because it wasn't something that was done in vain. I think it is something that should pay, spare us to continue to do the good work. And if there's anybody who hasn't been baptized before, I also implore you to use this opportunity to take notes from this lesson here. Jesus died and was buried, but most importantly, he was, he, he was resurrected. And our lives too, we need to die to our old self and be baptized. And as we rise out of the waters of baptism, we become a new person. And if anyone would like to do that, feel free to talk to me or any of the men around so that you can be directed and you could also do the same. Thank you very much for your attention.